Welcome in, welcome in. God bless you, everybody. Come on in. TTW through the word Sunday morning worship with Pastor Dave and Bernadette Mills. Good morning. So good to be with you, and you see it, Millennial Sunday. Yes. We're excited about what God is doing in the earth this season. It's just been a powerful time of watching the hand of God move in so many different ways. Well, I'm excited just because of what you just said. It's uh, Millennial Young Adult Sunday, and it's been really exciting seeing all that they've been a part of this just this short 2021. And I'm excited about how God's going to use them so awesomely, even today. I, I'm hyped for it. I'm hyped for it. I got my pen and my pad. I'm ready to receive the word. I'm ready to be in some worship and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm excited about it. There's a scripture that says in Psalm 78, it says this, We will not hide them from our children, showing from generation mm -hmm. to come the praises of the Lord, his strength and his wonderful works that he has wow. done, that the generation to come might know them. The generation has already come, and they already know him, all right? He says they know him, and that they might even teach their children to yes. stand on it and stand in the word, and that they would make him known from generation to generation. Wow. So I'm glad to be able to watch this even today. You're going to watch generation from generation pass the baton, mm. pass the torch of the kingdom, and celebrate the God that we love. I, I'm excited for each one of them, for every oh, part yeah. that they're carrying oh, yeah. out. Oh, yeah. As Stacy is facilitating the exhortment oh, yes. of things that are oh, taking yes. place oh, today, yes. as Devontae comes up and releases the word of faith, as David is in the atmosphere just oh, yeah. holding it down, oh, yeah. as Bria's going to release the word, and just with Noah following up to talk about what's taking place in the lives of some of our young millennials. And then it's a privilege to be a seasonal, being a part of oh, repositioning right. ourselves many times to pass the baton and uh, raise up the next generation of leaders and just be a part of that. Uh, just that God would give us that privilege or mandate is exciting. I agree with you. I, I think some people think that David, King David's greatest victory was Goliath. I think his greatest victory was called Solomon. Mm. It's him setting up the next generation of the kingdom to be in his position. And I think that's why our God is a generational God. Yeah. Abraham, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You never think of one generation. I want every generation. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's exciting about God, I think we're learning it more and more and more and have been over the last decade that God's not waiting for us to get 50 and 60 and 70 before people can be used by God. He used Josiah when he was eight years old. How old are you? I thought you was 30. No, I'm 25. Woo! <laughs> oh, girl! Oh, girl! I will just say right. 25. Every my right. next birthday is March 30th. I'm gonna be 25 right. again. All right. well, Amen. All right. So I'm gonna just stick to what God is doing with Josiah <laughs> at eight years old, what he did with Joseph at his age, what he did with David. I love it. And I I'm love excited love about it. what he's gonna do with I all of these young adults. Yes. Not going to do Doing. what is already transpiring yes. in their lives. They yes. understand beyond the walls of the church. Yes. Marketplace anointing, entrepreneurship. Yes. They don't have God in a box like sometimes mm. our generation and prior to mm. us can think the only way to mm. serve God is compartmentalized mm. into the house of God. Well, the building's not there anymore. What are you going to do? Go home. You're going to have to go <laughs> and get these millennials and young adults and learn how to impact the world for yes. Jesus Christ, just like they're doing in their everyday lives. Whether they're educators, entrepreneurs, STEM professors, uh, uh, technologists, digital, all the things that they're involved yes, in, it's, it's very humbling. Community engagement, it's exciting to see how they're going to expand what God is doing in the earth. I'm excited about it. So we're going to get, get started. You're yes. going to join us for worship. Come on, get up off that couch. Get up off that bed. Yes. Stand up in the presence of God. And let's get into worship as we get ready for what God has for us today. I'm yes. turning it over fast to burn so we can get some worship on. Get yourself up. Get out that bed. Okay. Give God the glory and honor. He done gave you some breath. The least you could do is give him some time for worship. Wow, well, you done got that little cat spanking from Pastor Dave. <laughs> you could have got that real hard ride from, Doc, from uh, God. So just come on. We're just going to enter into his presence just for a few moments because one moment with God can change your life forever. Amen. So we just want you to run back to Jesus. No matter where you are in your walk with God, there's always some space for growth with him. Amen. So uh, just listen to the words. Listen to the word of God. Be at peace in your home this morning. Yes. Are you running back to him? That's all. He just wants to see you like the prodigal son. Yes. This is the God that we serve. We're talking about running back to him. He's so precious. He's so patient. He's so kind. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Father. I hear you beckoning me. You hear him beckoning you in that still small voice this morning. To fall a little deeper. Yeah. Further than I've ever known. Not over a person.
person, but over Jesus Christ. I'm breaking through the bosses. Mm. Come on, God. Yeah. I'm running to mm. You know, the throne room can be anywhere you are right now. And I'm coming back to you. Ooh, I'm coming back to you. That's what Jesus is saying this morning. Come on back, daughter. Come on back, son. It doesn't matter where you're coming back from. With God, all things are possible. Just as you are, you don't have to clean up. Fixed up. Every other we done tried every other thing. And let me tell you something. That's not working for us. What God?
I am 28 years old. Yeah. And oh, I came back to Christ oh, yeah. at the age of oh gosh, I can't remember, but I think I was like 24, 25. Yeah. I'm right after right after undergrad. And I grew up I grew up in his presence, right? I grew up in his presence. But there was a time and a period where I ran I ran away. Yes. Ran away. And then I found him again. I found Thank Christ God. again. And I gotta say that ever since I ran back to him, it's been life changing. He's Amen. he's been he's been providing me with things. Oh, yeah. He's been showing me with things to put people in my life that I've never thought of me, that I I thought I would be connected with. He's just such an awesome guy. And yeah. so this morning we're just going to worship him. We're going to allow him to come in to our hearts this morning and, and just show you different things. Sometimes we there sometimes we are just like Father, I just need this, I need this, I need this. But are you actually allowing him to use you? Amen. Are you allowing him to use you? So this morning, we're just going to open up our hearts. I'm just going to go ahead and transition into a prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, as we come Thank to you, you this Jesus. morning, I just ask that you open up our hearts, Father. Thank you, Father. Allow you to come into our hearts. Thank you. Show Jesus. us who you are, Father God, this morning. I lift up everyone that's watching this morning. Hallelujah. Father God. The people that is in the presence with me this morning yes and those who may not know you father i ask that you bless Devonte this morning as he yes, comes forward god. with the word father god yes. we may be young father god but we we love you we are yearning for your Hallelujah. love father god i just ask that you lift up the young people around the nation father god those Thank who know you and those who do not know you Hallelujah. we know that you are there for us we Thank may not god. see some things father god but you are always working through us, Father God. Yes. And I just ask that the millennials, Father God, a lot of us are going through different things during this time. Thank you, Father. But you always cover us. Yes. Cover the seasonals as well. Cover everyone, Father God. Thank you, God. Just cover us this morning, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just continue to worship you, Father God. And I just ask this morning, Father God, that those who do not know you will come to you. That they will come to you, Father God. And cry out your name, because we know that you are the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, Father God. And so I just ask, as we transition this morning, Father God, that you just use us this morning. Just come into our hearts, Father God. I lift up all these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 Well, my name is Stacy Wallace, and I am one of the TTW, Through the Word, Millennial Leaders um, in our young adult ministry. And so I'm very excited about Millennial Sunday. Sunday. Yes. Um, it's just an awesome experience that our pastors, Pastor Byrne and Pastor Dave, see it, that we can come forward and just bring the word to, to other people. Like I said, we may be young, but we theme for God. Like, God is in us, and we want to make sure that we show other people that you can be young and still love Christ. Amen. You can be young and still love Christ. So Amen. this morning, we have two people that are going to come forward and bring the word, um, and and it's going to be amazing. Amen. Like said, it's going to be amazing. Like, he he lives through us, and like I said, age is just a number, but he, he lives through us, but age is just a number, but it's going to be a really good Sunday. So I'm just going to go ahead here and read a quick scripture for us. Um, I'm coming out of 1 Timothy 4, verse 8 through 12. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. This is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. That this is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people, and especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and in purity. For physical training is of some value, but God is for, for other things, Father God. Holding promise for both the present and life to come. Physical training, right, is of some value. We are going to just move into the next transition. Um, we're going to have Bria, Devante, sorry, excuse me, 
Bria, uh, sorry, Devontae's going to come up here and bring the word forward for us. Amen. 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 I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. <laughs> I was over there praising and worshiping. We are running back to Christ. We are running back to you, Lord Jesus. And I'm just super excited. I'm so glad to be here. It's Millennial Sunday. Let's give up to God. Oh, yeah. He woke us up today. He brought us on our way. He blessed and have breath and lungs and everything in our body. Amen. So I am going to be before you just a couple of minutes just to, tell, just to share with you what God has on my heart. Amen. Uh, so before I get started, I do want to pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come together in fellowship, dear Lord. Uh, bless the word that is coming forth. Allow me to decrease as you increase, dear Lord. And Lord, just thank you for the word that you have for me to tell the people. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 So, hello. Good morning once again. I am Devontae Phillips here, um, a TCW Millennial Leader. Um, and I'm here to talk to you guys about faith. Now, originally, when Pastor Byrne was like, hey, uh, man of God, do you want to minister about faith? I'm like, um, Pastor, you got the right person. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, you know, initially I did have some reservations, and I realized I wasn't even activating my faith when she asked me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, being completely transparent, I remember I looked at a sermon this past week by Pastor Mike Todd, mm -hmm. and it was, it's not safer in the shallow. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you that word convicted me, <laughs> convicted me, I was just like, okay, I'm going for it. This is what we're going to do. So, um, the title of my message for people that, you know, like the title and everything, but my title is, What Are You Feeding? Mm -hmm. What Are You okay. Feeding? And we're not talking about natural food. I'm talking about spiritual food. Um, are you feeding fear, doubt, uh, anxiety, depression, or are you feeding Goal setting, getting things completed, confidence, walking by faith. What are you feeding? So I have some scriptures. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. And also Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Yeah. And we all know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yes. So this week... I was trying to think, I'm like, well, what can I say? What can I do? And I'm like, God, well, what can I share, you know, to the people about faith? Yes. And he told me, share your own personal story. Mm. I'm like, God, what God? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, bro, I got to go that deep. Come on. But then again, as I mentioned, yes. this year is intentional. You're going mm -hmm. deep. Wow. Mm -hmm. I want God to bless me, but at the same time, I need to strengthen my relationship with him mm -hmm. and come out of the comfort zone. Love it, man. Okay, so, Devontae. Today, I am sharing my personal story. So, let's get into it. So, exercise and faith. So, prior to this whole pandemic, I felt like, God, what did you have for me? What? You know, I felt like I didn't hear from God. I felt like nothing was happening. I'm like, wow. God... I know you're there. Everyone else is getting blessed. Things happen for them. I'm just like, God, I don't, what's up? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what do I got to do? But um, I felt like God wasn't hearing me. I felt like nothing was happening. So April 23rd, 2020, mm. my world changed forever. Oh, now, prior God. to this, I thought I was activating faith. I thought I was, yeah, I got faith and I got faith. <laughs> you know, you can say it all day, but... It's truly believing and activating it. Yes. That's a whole different story. And completely trusting it and working into it. Um, so, April 23rd, 2020, my world changed forever, my world changed forever, forever, as I stated. So, long story short, wasn't feeling well. I said, okay, God, I just probably have a sinus infection or something like that. <laughs> um, you know, went to work, everything fine. Me and my coworker, we normally, normally eat out. Yeah. Um, we, I'm tearing up some hot wings, y'all. I'm getting it in. <laughs> Buffalo blue cheese, yes, yes. <laughs> and I could not taste those chicken wings. And I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> so I asked my coworker, I said, can you taste the food? He's like, yeah, it's really, really good. And I'm like, my God. <laughs> I know. I know. You lying. I know you lying, right? I know you lying. <laughs> I said, I don't got no food. God, stop, stop. So then... I was like, okay, well, maybe I, you know, schedule a test and this and the third. It seemed like as soon as I got the test, those symptoms was like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I, my, I still have a sinus infection. I just like, oh. so go there, get the test. Long story short, it comes back positive. And I'm like, 
No, me, I am a little dramatic. Everyone that knows me and my parents, you know. So I'm like, God, no, <laughs> don't take me, Lord. I have my whole life ahead of me. <laughs> so I am very dramatic, you know what I'm saying? Trying to gather my thoughts together. Um, and I'm like, God, what? For real, you want me to go out like this? But in that moment, I realized my faith needed to be activated. Wow. Um, you know, because Teacher. I realized, like, during that time, looking at the news, everyone's like, Dying, this, that, and the third, your arm's gonna fall off next week, and this, that, and the third. And I was literally like terrified. And I said, God, why me? Mm. And God said, why not you? Mm. And I'm like, what? What is that supposed man. to mean? What is that supposed to mean? So, mind you, the virus is very new back in April. So, I was sick, um, you know, called my rig- my grandmother, uh, Apostle Duce Phil, she's praying with yes. me, this, and the third. And it's like, you know, you're a Christian, you believe, That's but good. it's like when you're presented with an actual test. Come um, on. And in the beginning, and I'm being completely transparent, in the beginning, it's like, I do not want my parents to have to plan my funeral. And I'm like, God, I'm too young for this. Like, God, you want to take me like, I was with all these different things that was yes. going on in my head. And I told my parents, I said, I will live and I shall not die. Amen. Come on. Yes. Yes. It's once I started to actually believe yeah. that Come on. and Excellent. activate the faith, that's when things started to change for me. Amen. Yes. That's when I knew this is what passes meant when you have to activate your faith, truly activate your faith. Yes. So, okay, we're going through it. I'm like, all right, got the coronavirus. All right. Quarantine in 14 days. All right, this is nothing. I can do it. I'm in my room like, Lord, this is cell 375. <laughs> Let me out. Let me out. So I'm like, okay, I'm going through it. And I realized I wasn't getting better. Yeah. Mm. I was not getting better at all. And I'm like, okay, like, do I still got faith even though in That's the natural good. it's still not going well? Mm. And I'm like, mm. God, what do I do? Because it's like, on one hand, it's like, yeah, I got faith, I trust God, but what is actually happening and what I'm seeing is not what I'm praying for. I'm like, so God, when am I going to, when are you going to bring me out of this, God? When, is you, you know, when am I going to do this? When am I going to do this? So, going through the process, everything, I have a fever, uh, over 100. Yes. For 10 days, I had a fever. Mm. Not three, not four, for 10 days. Yeah. And... I was still positive. I'm like, all right, God, all right, God, okay, God. But I started to go get wavery in my faith because yes. I'm like, God, you're not moving as fast as I need you to. Come on. Because I'm like, I'm getting scared now, God, because I'm, you know, first couple of days, it's like, okay. But God, this fever is not breaking. It's not going down. I'm not feeling well at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm still praying, still believing, still um, listening to music, yes. gospel music. But I, what's going on in the natural is scaring me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the fever lasted for 10 days, would not break. Yeah. So my grandmother called me mm-hmm. and she was praying and she was like, you know, you need to go to the hospital. Yeah. And mind you, that was my last, my, that was my last, I was like, no, because, mm-hmm. no, you know, the story, you go in, don't never come out. Here, never. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, absolutely not. I'm still fight, fight, fight. Oh, so after my grandmother praying and, you know, telling her what the Lord was saying and reaching out to her nurse friend and everything, she said, you need to go to the hospital. I said, okay. So I said, Lord, I said, well, I told my parents, I'm going to Christiana. They're the best ones up there. They're the best uh, hospital up there and up here. And yeah. they're like, well, no, your doctor is in Bay House, so you need to go to Kent General. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't want to go there. I don't know what you're doing. So I went to the hospital, and I was completely terrified. Mm. I had to activate my faith again because I've never been to the hospital by myself. Yeah. Mm. So I had to go, and, you know, they hooked me up to everything, you know, let them know, yes, I did test positive for COVID-19. You know, I had a fever for 10 days. I did not, you know, I ended up losing 34 pounds, wasn't yeah. eating like I was, you know, normally. And I told the nurse, I said, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little terrified because, you know, I've never done this before sure. and I've not been getting better. So she tells me, and God sent that angel, because even during the midst of what you're going through, God does place people in your life yes. to help you. Um, so the nurse, she's like, you're going to be fine. It's okay. You know, you just have to work on your breathing, this and the third, and, you know, Trust God, pray. I said, like, all right, God, amen. <laughs> Mind you, I said I had a fever for 10 days. 
When I went to the hospital the first night, my fever broke. Yes. Wow. Wow. I said, okay, God, all right. Yes. Finally. I was like, now we're doing something here. <laughs> took a little while, but it's okay. So fever broke, taste came back, everything was good. So then I was in the hospital, everything was fine. You know, I still, my breathing was still needed to be improved. Um, but I was, I was okay. So during that week, I'm fine. All right, okay, cool. So then they said, okay, you can go home. I'm like, all right, that's good. That's good. So then get home, everything's fine, you know, I'm still quarantined, everything's good. So then it was time for me to go back to work, trying to get into, you know, regular routine. And then I started coughing up blood. And I'm like, yes. God, what are you doing? I thought it was yes. you. I thought it was you. Mm. I'm thinking everything's done, faith, God, boom, boom, mm. boom. No, ended up coughing up blood. So yeah. what ended up happening, one of the reasons why I was so sick is because I had pneumonia as well as the COVID-19. Mm. Jesus. And, you know, my body was just going through a lot of turmoil at that time. And I'm like, what? Okay, didn't know that. I'm like, all right, guys, so I guess you wanted me to go through this. So then after that, some PTSD started to, you know, sure. set in. So I was terrified to go out, completely terrified, germaphobe, didn't want to be around people, this, that, and the third. But through the midst of this, my faith was activated. Yes. God wanted me to know, regardless of what it looks like, who do you trust? Mm. And even when I was in the hospital, I had to reverse what they were telling me. So yes. um, the nurse, she was like, oh, you are so young. I hope you pull through. This is so sad. And I changed it. I said, I will pull through. Amen. Come on, I will do it. Come on, man. We'll do it. Thank you, God. Come it's on. so easy to look at the negative when the negative is in front of you. Mm. And that's why I wanted to name my message, Who Are You Feeding? Because yes. if I would have fed the depression, fed the fear, fed the anxiety, Come on. things would have probably never even turned out this way if I would have never even got up and faced the fear of going to the hospital. Mm. So it's like walking, you literally have, even though you don't see it, mm. you have to walk it out. I knew yes. I was healed. Yes. And I was like, God, I'm good. I can't wait till this is over. This is that third. I can't wait. But it's like you have to go through it. Regardless yes. of how long it is, how long, you know, how bad it may be, it doesn't last always. Mm. And, you know, activating that faith and knowing that God is in control and rebuke the devil in the name Amen. of Jesus. Come on. Come on, man. Rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's so <laughs> easy for people to pump fear and be terrified and, mm, you have the virus, mm. Because honestly, I felt like people were going to look at me like, oh, God, you contagious, this, that, and third. <laughs> Yes. I really, you know, those come are things on, that come to on, man. Because on. that was so traumatic. When you go through traumatic experiences, stuff like that, life or death, you don't know how it's going to go. Yeah. You know, you start to think the worst. But it's important to cancel out the noise, cancel out the negativity, and really, truly trust God. Yeah. And I just thank uh, Pastor Vernon and Pastor Dave for the opportunity sure. uh, for them to bring me on this platform because... I was like, I wasn't going to tell nobody. We're going to take you to the grave. It's not me and you. But, you know, you got me. But no, you need to hear, you know, different things that you go through. And don't feed fear. Mm. Don't yes. feed negativity. Mm. Don't feed procrastination. Yes. Be positivity. Be, uh, be intentional this year. Excellent. Be, you know, if you have to cut different relationships because mm. they're not benefiting you, if you need to spend some extra time doing set goal setting, getting things completed, that's what you need to do because when your faith is truly activated, Come on. the whole world will be burning down behind you, around you. But if you know that God has, in, has you in control, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. And on, I just want to thank God because he is a healer. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. Okay, God. Oh, yes, he is. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, oh, God, this is God. And I'm like, no, they got to really do it. Or you, you know what I'm saying? But no, God truly yes, is a healer. Yes. yes. <laughs> God truly healed me. Yes. Come on, man. Just to uh, wrap up, and even when my doctor, he was like, wow. Oh, my goodness. You went through a lot. I'm like, yeah. For real. <laughs> um, and um, he was just like, oh, my God. Well, thank God you're young. You know, I think you're aged. And I said, God healed me. Come yes. on, man. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Man. Come on. Because it was, a true, it was a true faith walk right there. Yeah. Mm. True faith walk. It was getting scary, but God has everything in control. Yes. So I say to you, Activate your faith. Mm. Yeah. And even if you don't even know what that means per se, you can look up scriptures, you can uh, look up podcasts, you can look up different things to feed your spirit. Mm -hmm. You need to starve the distractions. Good. Starve the distractions, feed the faith. Go ahead, so, man. Um, that's just my story. I don't want to uh, say 
you just be random because I'm you'll have dragged me on the stage. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's my sermon. What are you feeding? That's my testimony, and I just wanted to share it with you. Amen. 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 Woo! Love it, man. Wow. Proud of you, soldier. Proud of you, man. Again. You know Thank what? God. You, you know you right there, right now, saying, "Okay, God, I'm about to start some stuff. I'm about to feed Come some on. stuff. Come on. And guess what you're about to do? You saying, God, you are a healer. Okay, yes. I'm not asking to the left or to the right. Yes. As He said, I don't care if the whole world is burning down. Come on. I know what God has been to me. I'm telling you, Devante, that word was just so powerful, so challenging, and just your courage yes. to be so transparent. Thank you for taking the risk yeah. for Jesus Christ, because I can tell from the comments mm -hmm. how everybody is being so impacted mm -hmm. by your words, mm -hmm. by your testimony, and by your demonstration of faith. I'm telling you, you can just go ahead. I'm, I'm just as excited oh, as you up. are. I saw them say, oh, my God, I'm screaming. I was <laughs> screaming, too. Why? Because while it was so uh, funny, it was so relevant. Yes. It was so real. And yes. we could so identify with it's very easy to tell other people, God is this, God is that, as he was saying. But then when it's happening to you and you're faced with that, sometimes it can be a challenge. Come on. And it is totally a moment where he said it will activate your faith. It will totally become a moment that you will definitely uh, remember for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And so I just thank him for reminding us of the word of God. I thank him in, in uh, Hebrews. I thank him for reminding us that we have to have confidence in Christ. I thank him for reminding us that we have to reverse what people are saying to you when it does not line up with God. He said that can also be a challenge. For mm -hmm. those of you who don't know, Mr. Devante Phillips uh, he is from Through the Word Church. He is a millennial leader. Uh, he is also the uh, one of the program counselors uh, for communities in schools at um, Gunning Becker. Cologne in Gunning Becker, which is in Colonial School District. Uh, he is single. And um, I'm just excited about Nushi all of our young that. people. Nushi he is a graduate <laughs> of Delaware State University. I'm a strong proponent for godly Christian relationships. Um, just a powerful man of God. And uh, he is, he helms from Dover, Delaware. And I'm just excited about who he is as you heard his confidence. But just that God would trust him with that experience is so powerful. And how he's come out victorious, recognizing that it's about Jesus Christ. And it's going to be the faith that's going to make you whole. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not going to stop at Devante this morning. Mm -hmm. We have another young millennial who is so precious. She is, uh, she helms directly from Church Triumphant, mm -hmm. and where her mother is the senior pastor, Elder Barbara Hobbs, her name is Bria Hobbs, mm -hmm. and she is a senior at Delaware State mm -hmm. University. She's uh, on the dean's list. She's an honor student, and she is about to graduate and go into graduate school. She, oh, too, boy. is single and um, <laughs> just excited about our young people. Amen. But more than that, they love Jesus Christ. They have a covenant relationship with him. And they do not mind expressing themselves for the word of God. She's oh, the yeah. vice president of Force Ministries on campus. And I just want you guys to shout up hallelujah. Shout up some thumbs up and some hearts from Miss Bria Hobbs as she comes at this time. Celebrate yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Gurfey. A wonderful shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as she has stated, I do bring you greetings from the Church Triumphant Ministry. Yes. Where my senior pastor and mother is Pastor Barbara A. Hobbs. I thank her for allowing Woo -woo. me to be here. Yeah. I want to give honor to Pastor Dave and Pastor Vernon for allowing me to be here on this morning. I don't plan to be long. I'm grateful. I know y'all see me with a whole Bible and a peg. I promise I won't be. We're going to pray. We're going to read the scriptures. And we're going to get into what God has for us yes. this morning. Amen. So um, really quickly, I'm going to be coming from two passages of scripture on today. Um, the first one is Genesis 1, uh, verses 26 through 28. All right. And then I'm also going to be coming from Psalms 139 and 14. So first, let's go to Genesis 1, 26 through 28, and I'm reading from the NLT. It says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to yeah. be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and small animals that scurry along the ground. Verse 27 says, So God created human beings in his own image. 
in the image of God, he created them. Male yes. and female, he created them. 28 says, then God blessed them yeah. and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and the animals that scurry along the Thank ground. You, God. That was Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Psalms 139, 14 says, I praise you. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your words. Yes. My soul knows it very well. We're going to pray real quickly and we're going to get into what God has for us on this morning. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you. We honor you. We give you thank glory you, just for who you are, oh God. We magnify your name on this morning, God. We thank you for another thank opportunity you, to get into your word, to hear from uh, from you, oh God, now I ask that Holy Spirit, you would step in my place, have your way, oh God, yes. you know what the needs of your people are, so as I stand here as a vessel, Lord, I ask that you would use me, oh God, that you would get full priority, full potential out of me in this moment, I honor you, I praise you, and I give you glory, Hallelujah. I pray, amen. Amen. So, amen. Hallelujah. So if I had a topic on this morning that I want to share with you all, it would be remember the image. Okay. Mm -hmm. Remember the the image. So if I was to ask you, you know, well, describe yourself to me. Like, what are some attributes, some characteristics, some flaws that you would see mm. in yourself? What would you tell me? What would you tell me? Now, some of you may give me a short story of your life and, well, I'm this and I'm <laughs> that and my mother was raised, so I'm, you know, some of us, some, mm. some of us will go through a whole rundown and others will be like, you know, I don't, I don't know. That's um, good. You know, I don't know, but before we make this whole fantasy and facade mm. of who we are and this is me and this is, I want us to take a moment to kind of be honest with ourselves. Glory to God. If I asked you, are you living out God's original design for your life? Mm. Is the life that you are living the life that God designed for you to have? Mm. Well, in the moment of honesty, I'll start and I'll say, honestly, if you would ask me, I'm not. Come on. I'm not living out God's original design for my life. And if we will all take the time to be transparent, then we will all see in some way, shape, or form, some area in our lives, we are not living out the initial design of God that he had for our life. Mm. And I know some of you already counted this, you know, this little sermon that out. Oh, this don't apply oh. to me. This don't got nothing to do with me. I'm Come working on my purpose. I'm being the best that God has for me. I'm in his plan. I'm in his will. This don't apply to me. It's a nice sermon, but I'm going to just, you know, head out. But um, I want you to understand that while you're on the right path and yes, you're pursuing the plan of God and you're going after the things of God, somewhere along this journey Come we on. call life, we lost the original intent. Mm. Somewhere you, along living life and doing ministry mm. and seeking purpose, Glory we lost God. sight of the intentional intent. Mm. So in Genesis 1, when God, and when the Godhead, meaning the Father, the Son, yes. and the Holy Spirit, they came together and they agreed to make human beings in their image. Yeah. So they gave specific responsibilities mm. to those that they designed in their image. Among these, um, among these designs, including to be fruitful in order to multiply, filling the earth, and then leading it, and then reigning over those things above and things that scurry along the ground. Mm. And what I love about the instruction mm. of the Godhead, what I love about the instruction of God is that it maintained order. Somebody yeah. say order. Order. Write in the comments, order. It maintained order. And um, many times we find that our plans don't work the way that we think we should or the way they think we should pan out because we don't have order. Good. You know what I mean, I, I got order. I got a whole five-year business plan. I done wrote down my um, quarterly <laughs> goals. I got my Come action on. steps. I got order. What are you talking about? I have order. So while, yes, you, you have order, yes, you're organized. Mm. But you're still missing the instruction. Mm. You're organized. Your plans are organized. They're step cool. You got it. But you're missing the instruction. Mm. So Proverbs 3 and 6 says, seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Wow. And there are some people who feel like they're making the right connections. They're doing the right things. They're doing everything they need to do concerning their purpose. Mm. And for some reason, we still feel stuck. Mm. It's like, God, I'm, I'm connecting how you want me to. I'm going to church. I'm mm. joining every minute. What's, what's going on? I still feel in a stuck place. And I know for millennials and yes. as people, 
um, young people, our biggest fears, and one of our biggest fears, if I could be transparent, is failure. If you was to wow. ask, what's your biggest fear? That I won't be successful, that I won't make it, that I won't achieve what I'm supposed to. Mm. And I come today, why I came to give this sermon, that I also came to speak to the fear of not being good enough, the fear of not knowing what to good. do, the fear of misunderstanding. And we come to bind the assignment of the enemy, even now in the name of mm. Jesus, and every worry, mm. every concern, every fear of not making it, every fear of not meeting the mark, we bind mm. it in the in the name of Jesus, yeah. we plead the blood of Jesus. We lose joy. Glory we lose to Jesus. God. We yeah. Lose yeah. We, lose we lose faith in the name of Jesus. I come to serve notice to the enemy and no weapon formed against the church. Yes. That everything that God has Glory designed to, to you to do will manifest in this season in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Glory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So now the will and the design of culture and society and overall the enemy is to um, persuade us away from the original intent that God has for our life. So the moment from, from the time of our conception, the yes. enemy has been intentional about persuading us. If I can get you to see the riches, if I can yes. get you to see the fame, if I can get you to see the fame, if I can get you to see why they making millions and you stuck at your nine to five, if I can get you to Come focus on. on that, then I can take you away from the original intent mm. and the original design that God has mm. for our life. So the, the enemy, if he can do that, then he can also shift us from focus to um, from focus and following God's design to his will for our lives. Does anybody know that the enemy is already mm. a defeated foe? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's already a defeated foe. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you may be asking that, well, what is God's design? I hear you talking about the original design, the original yeah. intent. What are you talking about? What, what's going on? Make it clear. So I want to break it down. I want to take time that God's initial design for us mm -hmm. as his people, as his children, made in his image, the original design is for us to be fruitful, yes. to lead, mm -hmm. and to maintain. Somebody say, be fruitful, be, be fruitful, fruitful, lead, lead, lead and, maintain. And, and maintain. maintain. and maintain. So let's break it down a little bit more. Bria, okay, those words, they're cute. What do they mean? So let's talk about it. Number one, God requires and requires us to be fruitful. Yes. And usually when we hear, you know, be fruitful and multiply, we think about um, the common notion is to go forward and create offspring in order to populate the earth. Mm. But can I remind you of Matthew 7 and 16 where yes. it says you identify them by their fruit or the way we act. Yes. So oh now here's God. the thing. We have successful, ambitious churchgoers with no fruit. Good. Mm. Yeah, you're successful. I yeah, you got it. it all together. Yeah, you know, your social media platform is all that. But you're not bearing any fruit. Mm. You're not bearing any fruit. So um, I want to, um, could you maybe ask me, well, Bria, what's the fruit? What are you talking about? I'm referring to the fruits of the Spirit. Oh, yes. Now in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, some of these including joy, peace, oh. long-suffering, patience, yes. all these things that God has required us to have as his children. And now the thing is that he told us to be fruitful and multiply. How can I multiply what I don't have in the first place? Mm. He said, yes, you're doing well to the public eye. Yes, Come you're doing on. well over there. But when it comes to the fruit, showing love to my people, being mm. patient, without people being kind and understanding in every circumstance, you lack it. There's no fruit, so there's nothing for you to multiply. Good. Mm. So one, God required us to be fruitful. Somebody say fruitful. Fruitful. Secondly, God designed for us to lead. Yes. He has qualified us as leaders. Each and every one of you on the live right here um, in, this, in this arena, God has required yes. us mm -hmm. to lead. He has positioned us to be leaders on this earth, in this earth realm. So what I love about God's leadership in Genesis 1, 26 through 28 is that even in leading, he still had counsel. Yes. yes. Even when leading and talking about creation, he Praise had God. counsel over it. What do you mean? He was not alone when making yes. a decision that would change the trajectory of the earth realm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you talking about? Well, um, in the verse, it says, let us make human beings in our image mm -hmm. to be yes. like us. Mm -hmm. Meaning there was more than one person there. But, Bri, what are you saying? Because the scripture yes. says God did it and God created mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but God, when he, when they said God, they were referring to the Godhead that I mentioned yes. earlier. The Father, mm -hmm. the Son, and the yes. Holy Spirit. They're all one and the same, but they come at different times to help us do different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So he had counsel. There was account of, accountability in his Glory counsel before. God. Creation. So, Bria, what are you saying? What are you telling me right now? I'm saying that I know we have dreams, I know we have plans, I know we have goals so and good. visions, but please don't um 
Don't do it without consulting the Godhead. Yes. Don't do it without consulting mm. godly counsel. And while mentors are cool and accountability partners are cool, all of this is fine. But when I talk about godly counsel, mm -hmm. I'm talking about the Godhead. Yes. Yes, mm. God is giving you people after his own heart to lead you and guide you in this thing that we call life. But when, when I talk about oh, godly God. counsel, I mean the Godhead. Come so, Bria, how am I supposed to do that? Well, if it doesn't rain with your Holy Spirit, if Come you on. have a plan and the Holy Spirit don't say, yeah, that's Come me, on. back away from it. Come if on. what you're doing isn't covered by the blood in Jesus, Come yes. Yes. don't Come go on. that way. If God and his authority ask Father, Come do not on. please Come ask on. your child, don't go that way. Consult the Godhead. Yes. 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 Consult yes. God, seek counsel, yes. seek the Father, seek Jesus, seek oh. Holy Spirit. You rocking with this? Yes. Is this, is this did you send him? Come on. Come on. Her? Seek Come on. godly Glory counsel. To God. And the thing is, what we don't do or what we can do in this season is come to God with the finished product. Mm. Hey, God, look at this. You like mm. this? I'm going to be a millionaire by 32 and I'll be married and have a house. Ain't this a cool plan? Come on. This is a cool idea, ain't it? Mm. And he's like, that's, that's backwards. She knows she <laughs> teaching that, up in here. That's not okay. what my word says. Come on. That's not what my word says. What happens is that God didn't begin mm. to distribute the responsibilities to his creations until he consulted and he got approved that there would be mm. creations in the first place. Come yes. On. He said, let us make men in our image. Come so on. that was him at, you think this is a good idea? Yeah. All right, cool. So now they're going to rain. They're going to be fruitful and multiply. Yes. They're going to lead. Oh. They're going to do. He didn't assign yes. responsibilities to his creation until he got approval and authorization Come that on. we could be created mm. in the first place. Mm. Don't bring God the finished product. Is he going to leave? Don't bring God the finished product. I didn't, that's, that's not me. Come on. Don't bring him the finished product. So he's required us to be fruitful and multiply, right? Mm -hmm. Secondly, he's required us to lead, to take leadership, but we cannot do it without first the approval and authorization of Come God, on. of the Godhead, of the godly counsel. And lastly, when God created us, mm -hmm. his design and his intent is that we would maintain. Yes. Somebody say maintain. Maintain. Well, we just came through a year. We're going into the second month of a new year that required us to maintain like never before. For yes. a lot of us, I barely made it. <laughs> <laughs> I barely got through 2021. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. But he's required us as his yes. children and creations to maintain. And it's easy to start a good work. You know, you get an idea. You spend like maybe all night prayer. And God speaks to you. Oh, yeah, God, that was you. Yeah. God, I'm going to go forth. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, yes. that was you. You know, we start to go work. Yeah, tell people I'm doing this. I'm doing yes. that. God assigned me to start. You know, I'm excited. I'm excited. So it's easy to start it. But what mm. happens when the work no longer excites you? Good. Good. What happened when the thing gave you responsibility and reign no longer? The thrill is gone. What happens mm. when I'm Come bored? On. What happens I when love I'm it. tired, God? I don't Come feel like on. getting up to tea. I don't feel like getting on Facebook Live to yes. talk to God. I don't feel like you gave Come it to on. me. But I, don't, I don't feel like it. I, I can't maintain. But God's initial intent is that we would be faithful past the point of our feelings. Come on, come on. God's intent is that we would be faithful come on. past the point of our feelings. What does come that mean? I don't feel like it, but I know that you gave it to me. Yes. I don't feel like it, but I know that it's people that's counting on me. I may not feel it in my personal, in my flesh, but I know that my spirit is riding on this. Yeah. God, I know that you gave it to me, so I have to see it through. Come on. Right now, I feel, even if I don't feel adequate, even if I don't feel appointed mm. anymore, even if I don't feel like this is going to do what you said, yeah. it's going to press past how I feel so that I can, plead, I can complete the assignment that you've given to me. Come on. The intent is that we will be faithful yes. past how we feel. Faithful? Past how we, how feel. we feel. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 says that whatever your hands find to do, yes. do it with all your might. Shh. Do it with all your Come might. On. So, so now the question is, can you maintain the rain? Mm. R e i g n. Yes. Can you maintain the rain? The rain. When God created us, He gave us rain on the earth from of the things above, the things yes. above. Yes. That's not always the easiest to rain up God. To, I, I gotta go back to them. Yes. I gotta complete this. Can you maintain the Come rain? On. Mm. In this season, can you maintain 
the place where God has appointed you over mm -hmm. in this season. And wherever God has you, whatever space or season that you yes. are currently in, can you uphold what God has called you to do? Wow. I don't feel it, but I know you gave it to me. So Glory God, to God. God. I got to maintain because that was one of your original mm -hmm. intents. I got to maintain. I got to see this through. So in creating us, God's original design was one for us to be fruitful and multiply, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And secondly, his design was for us to, to lead to yes. the leaders over this earth, bro. And then thirdly, his design and his intent would be mm. that we would maintain. Glory. Maintain. And I'm wrapping up. I promise you. I'm last year. So, wow. how do I live out God's original intent? Mm. That's the question, right? Because you've been talking about God's design and you got to maintain. That sounds real good, but how I do it, sis? All right, got you. So let's go back to Psalms 139 and 14. And it yes. says, I praise you for I am fearfully yes. and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Yes. So three things I want to give to you and I'm going to have my seat. <laughs> I appreciate the time. So first... The uh, first thing I want to give you is praise. And when we think of praise, we mm. think of acknowledgement. Yes. Acknowledgement. What are you saying? I praise God. Um, yeah, you praise him because um, he made you fearfully and wonderfully made. But more than that, you acknowledge the mm. fact that it's his image that you're made in and mm. not yours. Glory you acknowledge God. whenever you praise. Most times when Glory. you praise, if you do it the right way, the acknowledgement isn't going to you. Mm. But it's going to the person that deserves it. So when we talk mm. about God creating us in his Glory image... We praise, we acknowledge the fact that I didn't create the image. Mm -hmm. As much as I want to say I, I did this, this is me, yes. I didn't create the image. God did. Oh. So what that means is if I didn't create it, that means I don't have to sustain it either. Mm -hmm. When you create an image that is not God and that is yours and that is fed on your own flesh and your own oh, feelings, you have to sustain that same power. Yes. You have to do those same things to keep it. So because it's coming from you, you got to make oh, sure it stays in the thing in your own strength. But when you mm. praise, when you acknowledge, when you recognize that, God, this is your image. Yes. Because it's yours, you sustain it. You do it. You keep it going. I can take my hands off of it because it wasn't my image to begin with. Mm. So when we praise, Thank we acknowledge God. that it's his image. And because it's his image, he's the one who sustains it. Mm. We don't got to stress. Yes. We don't got to mm. put all our work and say, I'll sustain it because it's my image. Mm. Mm. I'll sustain what I put in place. So one, praise, acknowledge the fact that it's his image. And if it's his image, then he sustains it. Next, position. Mm. You have to recognize the position that being made in his image yes. puts you in. He already gave us power and dominion to reign. So now, now the thing is that we have the upper hand. Yeah. So as I walk along this earth, as I pursue, you know, different things, different opportunities, I got the upper hand. Yes. Because I'm positioned as his image on this mm -hmm. earth. So that means that I have all power and authority that yes. he has. He brought it down to his child right here. So my position is greater. Not saying I'm better than you. Mm. Not saying that no. I don't have no. laws. Not saying that I'm not perfect. But I got the upper hand because he's on the inside yes. of me. I understand my position. So I acknowledge him. Understand that I have the upper hand because of the position that mm -hmm. being created mm -hmm. in his mm -hmm. image has. And then lastly, my posture. Come on. My posture in order for you to be constant and confident in a confident place of knowing, yes. you have to be intentional with your heart's posture before yes. God. So what does that mean? Your heart posture is bow. Yeah. Submission. A mm -hmm. lot of times we don't always like God's image for us. Mm -hmm. We don't always like the That's things excellent. he tells us to do. We don't like the places he puts us in. But we have to recognize, because this isn't my image, yes. I bow submission. Oh, I don't God. understand it, but... I relinquish every right feeling oh, issue. Yeah. I got to give it to you because Lord, it's not my God. issue. My heart, my my uh, oh, heart's yeah. posture is bowed because Great. I have to humble myself enough to know that this is your image. Yeah, this is your plan for my life. I make this. I can't sustain this. Come on. I bow. Come on. And Crazy. submission to your plan. So just to sum it up, how do I live out God's original intent? Praise Him. Acknowledge yeah. that yes. it's His image. We don't got to sustain it by ourselves, y'all. Yes. We don't have to sustain it by ourselves. Secondly, posture. Remember who you are on this earth, bro. Yes. You got the power of the living God on the yes. inside of you. Fuck up. Yes. You feel? Come on. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thirdly, shut up. I always have to be in a place of submission. Yes. In order to recognize and understand. Yes. And remember the image mm. of God. So on today, yes. I submit to you to remember 
the image. Yes. Amen. Step with the image. This is the word of God. Thank you, God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Devontae Phillips, amen. Woo! I mean, man, I want to celebrate who they are in the kingdom of God and how God used them yes. in their personality, in their gifting, in their person, and with their own anointings. Mm. That's what it's about. The wonderful thing about, about the kingdom of God is God can use everybody. Yes. Because he made them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 And he's choosing them. And he's choosing yeah. them in this season to use them. I pray you receive these words today. Oh, my I mean, God. what are you feeding? Remember the image. Mm. Wow, you should. I'm trying to tell you, I'm blessed. I'm just thinking about uh, Devante, the demonstration of faith. Mm -hmm. He had to go through the process, mm -hmm. he had to be able to experience the power of God. Mm -hmm. He was not just telling you what it uh, feels like, he had to demonstrate to you yes. why this is necessary. Yes. What do you need to do differently? And now when you go to say God is a healer, mm -hmm. people will believe you. Oh, yeah. Amen. And then Bria, mm. blowing my mind this morning mm. with this word to remember the image. Yes. One, it's not ours. Come on. Two, talking about we got to be fruitful and multiply. Come on. We got to lead. Yes. And we have to maintain. Come on. And you the just rank. don't, you the have, rank. she rank. said. Maintain the rank. Maintain the rank. The rank. And then when we're going to do that, we're going to have to make sure we recognize he's given us power. Come on. Position. And power. And I have to make sure I understand my posture. Of my heart. And my posture of my heart has to be bowed down and humbled. I know it's right. Oh, my God. Be blessed. Come on and send up those hearts of hallelujah. Oh, they're going and up. thumbs up. Thank you, yes. Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad that the kingdom is in good hands. Yes. Yes. And for this generation. Oh, so wow. I, I think it's wonderful when people say, well, well you're older. Hey, about age. Yes. It's about, are you, are, you, are you infatuated with Jesus? Yes. It ain't got nothing to do with my age. I'm, I'm, they are infatuated with Jesus at their season, and I'm infatuated with Jesus at my season. And wow. we want to let the world know the kingdom is bringing forth the king in every season. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited because when I thought about Devontae, just how relevant. Mm -hmm. uh, just reaching people right where they are, mm -hmm. but challenging us. You're going to have to be walking in faith. Come on. You're going to be afraid sometimes. And you're you're going to ask some questions. Come on. And if you just can't have it, you got to activate it. you got to activate it. And then for his boldness and confidence to be able to let you understand that he is, watch this, oh, he's an overcomer. What? Yes. I over overcame COVID. Yes. Now what? Yes. You know what kind of faith that puts inside of you? You'd be like, I do well. You know, the Lord helped me defeat that already. What? 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 Yes. I think yes. that word was buck up. I just yeah. got a new word. <laughs> buck up! Buck up! Rhea said you don't have to buck up, okay? Just the confidence. I just love it. It just blows your mind. Yes. Seeing this generation <laughs> take the world by storm. Mm. Take the world by faith. Mm. Because they believe God. And so we have one more person yes. that's going to give us a demonstration of what it looks like when you walk out your full 100% self in this generation. Yes. Her name is Noah Abigail Mills. Oh, yes, it is. And she is the fourth, no, one, two, yes. three. Yes, yes, you're right. Five children. Four, all right? Four, she's four. the fourth <laughs> child of our five children. And today, she's going to come talk about oh, yeah. what it means to walk through COVID when you're in Christ. Amen? Amen. Put your hands together. Let's celebrate. We're proud of her. Oh, we are so proud of her. Wow. Well, good morning, Noah. You look fabulous. How are you today? You're great. Amen. <laughs> was this a powerful time this morning? It was, I can't hear you. It can't was, hear you. It was, really good. it was amazing. And so I'm excited about you being here to help us close out today's time for our young adults. Thank you. Yes. Well, we're excited about what's taking place in your world. And we want everybody to know that they can do some things in the midst of this season. And sometimes it's not about the season, it's about what you do in the process. Mm -hmm. Tell us some of the things that you're working on during this time. And I hope we have enough time to talk about it. Okay? Um, hi, everyone. Um, yeah, we are definitely working on things right now. Um, as you hear my voice, I'm probably 
working on my thoughts, but it's because I'm not somebody that talks about the things that I do. Um, it's because I talk to God and he talks to me and we just go, we do it. Um, <laughs> but um, it's very much so something that, you know, you receive a revelation from God and I just go forth and do it. Um, at this time, I'm currently um, facilitating a educational reform platform. I have obtained over 15 certifications academically from every single Ivy League in the country. Yes. Um, I am putting out, or, or I guess giving a recipient scholarship tomorrow, um, I am drafting. Talk about some of these pieces a little bit because <laughs> they are happening and while it is an exciting time, it is very sobering because they didn't just happen. And yeah. while it's natural to your inclination to be able to accomplish them, there, there are things that sometimes people don't accomplish in their lifetime. So you're 23, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> you're giving out from your own personal resources mm -hmm. tomorrow an uh, educational scholarship of $500. Mm -hmm. People had to apply for that. Yes. Uh, you're uh, established an initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, you just wrote a book on educational reform. Uh, I want to talk about some of these pieces uh, briefly. Because I want people to understand that there, and most of these things you did in the midst of this last year. So if you just take one thing for yourself and grab a hold to what is some of those things you've been hearing, feeling like, would like to see done, and you can grab a hold of that and get motivated from listening to these three young people to say, how do I get started? So you just talked about a con to having six classes that you took, 16 16 <clears throat> during this time. During May. In, up till May, <laughs> yeah. you were able to accomplish 16 certifications. Yeah. What were some of those? Because I know I was able to do I, only I, one I of them with you. Just them. a few of them. I, I'm just, I very yes. really don't remember the mm -hmm. names of all of them. Mm -hmm. But um, I obtained some from Margaret um, Villanova, Cornell, Oxford, Cornell um, and just a whole bunch of other things, really, just mm -hmm. as far as, you know. I just believe that there's nothing that you cannot teach yourself. One thing about me that mm -hmm. makes me me is that I can teach myself anything and I do not, um, you know, confine myself to that of which is a, a, an academic institution or anything of that nature because mm -hmm. I believe that God has called us to so much more um, outside of who we believe that we're supposed to be in comparison to what is given to us as because we're not earthly beings. We should not be. We should. We, I should not look like someone who does not know God. Mm -hmm. We should not. Mm -hmm. they should, mm -hmm. The difference should be evident. Mm -hmm. um, and the understanding that I, if I have understanding that I am God's child, when I speak, as Devante said, and understanding my authority, mm -hmm. the earth should respond. Yeah. I'm not here to look like somebody who doesn't know God. I'm not here to have accomplished yeah. as much as someone who doesn't know God. I'm the, the child of God. I, yeah. I should be accomplishing all of these things. This yeah. is not out of the norm. This is not, uh, us being associated with my mediocrity is not a thing. Yeah. It, we should be the, the antithesis of it. So um, when I say things like I've written a book and I have over 16 certifications or yeah. uh, two miles of a highway is about to be named after me or things yeah. of this nature, <laughs> at this point, it's just like, it should be like, great, what else? What's next? Like, yes. it should not be, oh, like, let's do it. No, no, I am writing a law. I am doing all these things yes. at this moment. I'm 23. I've done all this. This is what I'm currently working on. Wonderful. But this is what it should look like when you look like God. If I'm going to look like God within the earth, mm. I should not be just... Yes, you know, I'm on fire for God and I know 35 scriptures and I can mm. No, you're just screaming loud in tongues. You know, this is not that. <laughs> what God true. has called you to do is so much more and mm. outside of and you live in your life, I promise you, is not gonna start until you come outside of your comfort zone. Mm. And so there's no box for you, there's no limit to you, whatever you think yes. you're right now, unlearn it and re relearn it. Like start over. Really mm. forget everything that you've been taught and start again. Mm. There's nothing that you are incapable of. The can't is not a word, limit is not a word. Like you should be challenging yourself every single day. If your last yes. week like this week, there's a problem. Mm. If your yesterday looked like today, there's an issue. Like mm. if you are not mm. growing every single day, there's a, there's a there's a problem. God mm. God is not the stagnant God. He, God, I feel like we we are we're so like I'm I'm really big on like radical Christianity. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, you know, like you watch TV and like pastors be like waving and everybody fall out. Like that's my thing. So um, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm really good at that. So when we when we um, I feel like it's like I don't, don't want to say this term, but like we're punking God, but like yes, yes, so mm -hmm. we're like asking God for stuff like oh like God give me patience. Like no, like you he gave, he, he gave you the ability your limbs and woke you up this morning <laughs> and the, the, the ability of your limbs to your sound mind, you can, you can assert yourself and be patient.
that shit. Yeah. Do that. That's the thing. Like, your angels have been on break for like years. They are tired. Like, I'm waiting for you to give them something to do. The devil is not even scared of you when you get up in the morning. He's not. Because you are not somebody that he needs to fight. You don't fight mm. yourself. You, he, nobody is afraid of you in the kingdom earth realm. Mm. Your angels is waiting for... Mm. Your angels is tired. Like, <laughs> they are probably asking God, like, please, they don't worry know before we shift people are watching in there some of them are like yes yes girl <laughs> fire some of them are like I know, uh, yeah. because that's not their world and that's, mm. and listen that's okay. here's my question for them for you yeah how did you get this way were you always this way would you, did you have any challenges i think y'all can tell them that i was <laughs> <laughs> um, my, not to be disrespectful to my mother no, 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 i know you're not but my i very literally was born this way um, <laughs> things that are mm -hmm. um, at minimum level, I, I come into space and I demand excellence. I demand um, more in, mm -hmm. a lot of, in a lot of spaces. And if you're not that way, that too is okay. It's not to say that you cannot become that way. Mm -hmm. But I think, like anything else, you can be whoever you want to be. Yeah. If you decide tomorrow that you're going to up your standards for yourself, up your standards for your relationship with God, up your standards for who you want to be, you can be me tomorrow if you want to be. You could have my level of faith tomorrow if you wanted it. You could have the next five minutes, but you have to decide that. Mm -hmm. the, what we have to get serious about as Christians, I feel like, is our authority within the earth. And mm -hmm. we can say for years that, oh, I can do this and God is great, but unless you really are using the work of your hands to show people that, I can say this guy is green. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to just like, share, share why she's sharing. Yeah. Um, this is, this is powerful. Oh, yes, it is. It's powerful on many levels. A lot of times as she's talking, as I hear her speaking, I feel like the world, the marketplace is where her anointing is. Sometimes I feel like the church cannot uh, handle some of what, where you are. And, uh, one of the things I think about is we had this year and we were so challenged. God blessed us with 2020, even though people see it as a challenge. We were blessed with 2020, as Devante said, because you walked through situations that propelled you into a place where you would never have gone on your own. Yeah. And then God blessed us financially with stimulus checks, blessed us with unemployment checks, blessed us with all these things, but what did it mobilize us to produce? Right. And so through these times, you were, uh, we talked about that you took got 16 certifications. It propelled you to go do something different. Right. Okay, you wrote a book. It propelled you to do something different. Okay, you about to adopt a highway. Mm -hmm. That came from somewhere from God. And all of it is from God. All of it I from really God, but what I'm sharing with them is to say that you don't have to do 20 things because Noah did them. You can pick your one thing. You can pick where you are. You can start from where you are. None of us have the same measure of faith. The Bible says God gives us 30, 60, and 100 fold. You choose where you are, and you decide whatever decision you make that's where you are. What we want to do is be able to put before you people who believe God, take him at his word, and they are activated and fully in demonstration 
of what it is that they're saying. You heard Devontae challenge us this morning. You heard Bria challenge us this morning. And now you had an ocular demonstration through Noah. There's nothing that's off limits. There's nothing that's off the table. She has not even finished. She just was selected by Forbes uh, to be a part of a selection only uh, network and community that comes out this comes out now. So I'm just sharing with you that that's her story. The reality is, what will your story be? What will your story entail? What will you decide based on what Bria has challenged us with in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28? Will I embody God's original intent for my life? Will I remember his image? And will it be fruitful? Will I lead? Will I maintain? Or will I let life circumstances lead me? Well, today we're so grateful that you chose to spend time with us. I want you to celebrate Noah today. She's yeah. beautiful. We congratulate you and keep doing what you are doing. Okay, but slow down a little bit and keep moving. Well, celebrate her with us today. And have a day. Wow, 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 wow. If you are tired of just hearing about what's taking wow. place in their lives, guess what? It's just God challenging us to go and reassess with your 24 hours in a day. You still have 24 hours in a day. One of the things Noah used to tell me in her first book was, Beyonce has the same 24 hours that we have in our day. What are we doing with it? And that was when she was 16 years old. Well, babe, were you excited about the young about people to break today? break my jacket, man. So yes! Proud. I'm just proud of my, my kids. I mean, they are phenomenal. Jesus. I'm learning stuff from them. They're teaching me. They're leading me. They're guiding me. They're pushing yes. my faith. I'm excited about this season in the kingdom. And to be able to do it with them, it's crazy. So, I want, wow. I want, I want I just, again, let's do some thumbs up and thank God for what yes. this, you know, it just brought us. Let's get some hallelujah hearts because I believe that God is so busy trying to get mm. us to think outside. The, watch this. He's trying to make us think so bad outside of the church. He kicked us out of church. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, he said, listen, I didn't want you to be boxed in in this season. Yeah. Don't be boxed in in this season. Wow. And from the things you heard, if you don't know what to do, keep feeding yourself. Yeah. I think you just told you that. Oh, and you know, God. I kind of act. Remember what your image was. Come on now. Mm. And then if you don't know what to do, you've seen somebody doing it, so now you got a picture of it. Yes. Man, I'm trying to tell you, my still, my soul is blessed from today. Wow. What a powerful, powerful, powerful day. Oh, my God. I'm just grateful. I just want to say out loud, Special thank you to Stacy for yeah. just facilitating this time, thank leading you. us into the presence yes. of the Lord, challenging our minds to get mm -hmm. excited about what millennials do, are doing at this moment. I want to yes. say a special thank you always to Destiny, my daughter, our oh, technician. Yes. Oh, She's yes. usually behind the cameras, behind the Zoom, behind the conference, behind making things work, behind the platforms yeah. and putting it all in perspective. I want to say a special thank you to David, who is here with Stacy, yeah, who is just in the atmosphere, oh, yeah. creating, praying, and just being a part of today's process. We don't take for granted, and we thank God for our seasonal minister, Dwayne Phillips, yeah. who is here again today with our down. pastor. I thank God for this time because... God wants us to see a full spectrum mm. of what he's doing in the earth. And if you were watching this morning, I know you were challenged. Mm. You were challenged to the point of change. And if you want to do something different, Devante gave us a prescription for how to do that. Yes. And so as we stand here today, we just want to ask if you're watching, do you know Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you know the image you were made in? Mm. And if you don't, today you can always take the opportunity to invite him into your life. Amen? Amen. Give your life to Christ. It's the best thing you could do. He'll give you that authority, that power, the mm. ability to produce the fruit and live it out in such a way you can become a leader. Lead some things and be able to operate in it and that you can feed that faith that he gives wow. you and become everything God called you really to be. And we're going to open up the opportunity be able to be a blessing to God and to honor him with yes. our tithes and our offerings at this time. Amen? I believe without a doubt that tithing opens up heaven. It's his word. He says, wow. if you bring the tithes to my storehouse, I, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Yep. Now, in the Hebrew, that word room means, I'm going to open up your life. Yes. It don't mean just a door or a family room or a kitchen. Mm. It means I, the room I'm talking about is, I will pour out a blessing that will expand wow. to the room of your life. Why? Because mm. you trust in my covenant, so I'll trust things into your life. 
Wow. What a partnership you got with God. And we trust God. Plus, we honor him because the tithes is his. It ain't ours. Yes. We don't rob God. We're, we're, not, we're not thieves. Amen. Hallelujah. You're a thief, you're, I, I found out this ideal that larceny is when you break in somebody's house and then you take their stuff and you show them your hands. Mm. Uh, it's kind of like going to church, but in worship, showing his hands, but not then keeping God's stuff. Wow. That's a thief. Wow. That's, that's larceny. You know wow. that it's in the house. You broke in the house. You was in the house of worship and wow. praise. Then you're left with somebody else's stuff. <laughs> that's a thief. You're not a thief. I'm not talking to none of y'all, so don't worry amen, about that. So, so, but we want to honor God with our first fruit and honor yes. God with our tithes and honor him. We make him above all others and over all others. Yes. Amen. And you know, as Pastor David is saying today, the Bible says the tithe is holy. Mm -hmm. It belongs to God. Mm -hmm. And so as you're writing out your check or doing your cash app, do it to TTW. It's on the screen behind us. We just invite you to experience all that God has for you. And worshiping God with our treasure and with our talents is one of the primary ways we can honor him. And so if you'd like to sow into our young people today, feel free to make a yes. note on your TTWBFC. If you'd like to continue to send in your love offering for Pastor Dave, please do so at this time. But always send your tithes because that's God's first priority uh, for your giving process. Also, if you're a member of another church and you're fully committed to that ministry, mm -hmm. we ask you to direct your tithes mm -hmm. to that church. Mm -hmm. Amen. We honor God today, and mm -hmm. we're just grateful that you chose to worship with us. There are so many things that are about to take place uh, with our young millennials. And the first thing is they're going to be having uh, young adult Bible studies that kick off this Thursday night mm -hmm. at 7 o'clock. And we are excited. You can go on TTW Millennial page on Instagram. They'll have all kinds of advertisements all week long about the Thursday night Bible study kickoff on Sunday, Valentine's night. This oh, yeah. is for everybody. Say everybody. Well, 35 well, if, well, right. if they can get into the theater, according to the CDC regulations, right. if you are single, like to mingle, and want to go out and have a great time. This is not come down, sit down, have a meeting at no, church. No, no, no. This is a Valentine's no, no. party time, time. fun. Yeah, time. It's gonna and you heard Devante, he will be hosting oh, yeah. on that night. Emery Marshall will be also featured, uh releasing his spoken word. There will be uh prizes, food, James. upon arrival, gift bags, uh, just glam bags, all kinds of things. There'll be 30 second connects. You have the opportunity to meet everybody in the room. Nobody will leave out there, whole hum, whole drum. No, get your friends, get your men. And I have a challenge. If you're a godly man and you're single, I want you to reach out to us. Go into our inbox. We'd like to have you on a panel. We want to hear your perspective mm. on, are men afraid to ask ladies out on a date? And if so, why? Mm. Is it the lady's fault? Or is it because he's afraid of rejection? Mm. It could be a lot of reasons, but mm. we'll have that conversation on that night. How about you give us about five minutes? Of godly men, men, reach out, inbox us, let us know what your thoughts are. And if you don't remember to reach out to us, reach out to Devontae Phillips. Amen? Amen. We're excited about hearing your thoughts on that night. Well, with that said... Pastor Dave. Two quick things. I want to thank you guys so much also for celebrating Apostle Coleman. Amen. Woo! His birthday was yesterday. We celebrate your dad. Oh, love you and appreciate you. Oh, that was so you. awesome. Thank Happy you birthday, Apostle. We appreciate you and love you so much. Second thing, I'm excited about being with the men tonight. 7 p.m. Yes. 8 p.m. We've been, oh man, y'all been lighting it up. Lighting it Pastor up. Pastor Dave, Every some week. of the other men want to be a part of that. Can they be a part? Other yeah, men? Yeah, we'll put the they Zoom. We'll put, we'll, we'll put the Zoom number out on the screen uh, later on. Amen. Later on. All right. Okay, and then you were speaking for Oklahoma's men's conference yesterday oh, that was off oh, the Richter scale. Crazy, it was just. Dr. Was, Gal, was, I'm gonna use their word, bananas. Yeah. Right, bananas. Go back, you can go inside, go back into Facebook, and you can go up to it, and you can even oh, go through the different goodness. ones. And my piece was greatness in your house. Well, just here in the follow-up mm. with the pastors, mm. pastors from Florida, pastors mm. from Virginia, mm. pastors from Alabama, pa men of God from all over, Dr. Gal. He did his thing hosting that men's conference on yesterday. But just for you to be able to be one of the featured uh, presenters, mm -hmm. I thought was such an honor. But it's only in you to release that type of word. Wow. So, I mean, I'm biased. 
But I'm just so proud of you. Amen. I think that's called greatness in the house. Yes. All right. Amen. Congratulations. But I'm excited about what God is doing in this season. We, oh. we want you to be encouraged. What? 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 Valentine's weekend getaway. Destiny, <laughs> what, is the, what is the process? It's we're excited oh, about you guys. Right, girl. Remember we're going to celebrate Tell Jesus me. all day Tell her me. Tell her me. Tell her me. Valentine weekend. It's going to be a powerful time. We get out to Chesapeake. Everything locked down to the oh, CDC guidelines. Mask on, but we're going to get our dance on. I'm going to tell you now. I'm going to get my slow drag back. But and I'm trying to tell you. Uh, we're going to have a good time, pool party, all that kind of stuff. You can go for the information to find a little later. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being with us today. Again, bye-bye.